Hey guys, welcome back. This is Shane with Unique Arts, and today I'm just going to talk really quickly on something I feel like we don't really talk about so much, and something that might be kind of obvious when you think about it, but at the same time might not be, and that is Spartan art. We have a tendency in art history to look at probably the biggest perpetrators of the classical art and just like Greek art in general, whether archaic or whatnot, and that's the Athenians and like the region around Attica or even like the Corinth and such like that, like Proto Corinthian things. And that's that's for a fair reason, but the Spartans made art too. And now that might sound contrary to the idea that Spartans are very militaristic, and they were actually. The idea is though that the Spartans are only the names of the citizens, and Sparta had conquered other regions. Those were often their slaves, and those were called the Helots or the Helots, and the Spartans were the citizens, and there was relatively few of them, but there was a middle class, essentially second class, called the Perioikoi, I believe, if I'm pronouncing it right. They weren't serfs like the Helots were, but they weren't citizens, and they did they did serve in war, do military stuff in, to some degree, but they were the ones that, um, so like when Spart Spartan citizens were awarded plots of land and such like that, and they had helots to work it for them so they can contribute to the common meal and that was required for citizenship. But the land actually belonged to the state, but the perioikoi were actually allowed to own and work their own land. And they weren't given helots to work it for them, obviously. <laughs> but the perioikoi, that class, are also the ones that created art. That's largely because the Spartans kind of saw it beneath them. They were more focused on militaristic matters and what have you. And so the perioikoi are the ones that made the armor for the Spartans. And they also are the ones that most likely made pretty much all of the art that we have from the Spartans. Or at least the vast majority of it. When you think of art, at least Greek, the first thing that comes to mind for me, which maybe isn't the case for everyone, is that maybe more so up to the archaic period with black figure and red figure pottery it's pretty interesting after that people kind of just focus a lot on the sculpture Spartans did do a bit of pottery I'm just gonna throw a few up there pretty much but and so these are all actually from the same general period there's the hunt painter and he actually painted this amphora that has Gorgonian like a face if you see that in the center and then the uh, cranes and sphinxes so I feel like we have a tendency also to think of sphinxes as an Egyptian motif which as far as I know actually the Greeks may have adopted that from the Egyptians they did adopt a lot of things from the Egyptians but they have them depicted there but if you remember also there's a famous sphinx in the story of Oedipus Rex. There's also this cup by the writer painter. This is something you get a lot with of lots of artists that painted pottery in Greece like the Berlin painters famous one I believe that's Athenian but he just painted these solo figures with a kind of just blank background and stuff like that and so they don't know their names or that's how they identify them. And so there's this cup with Zeus and an eagle. Wouldn't put it past Zeus to, you know, maybe get a little funky with himself because, you know, he just has a tendency to touch everything inappropriately. But that one's actually at the Louvre. And then there's also these simple ones like this Laconian crater that doesn't actually have any figures on it. It kind of has some sort of patterns along the base and the top. There's a good variety. This one, which is kind of interesting, is also by the Hunt painter who did the Gagronian one. And it's got Cerberus led from the underworld. And he also has fighting cocks with him. That's what they call it, Cerberus. Led from the underworld with fighting cocks. And I'm not exactly sure the symbolism <laughs> behind that. But they also did work in statues and they did work in bronze. It's also, if you don't know, lots of those old Greek statues were originally cast in bronze and they would be hollow, of course. Uh, so it's just a cast, it's not solid. It's a lot cheaper that way, obviously. And lots of the marble ones we have are actually, they've just been remade. Lots of the Romans made copies of them because of these Greek statues that they really liked. They obviously adopted a lot of stuff from Greek culture. And lots of bronze stuff was melted down over time because it's been thousands of years. So we don't have a lot of originals, but there actually is a uh, figure of a running girl, probably of Laconian manufacture, and it's just a figurine. And they also have a figure of a hoplite at the sanctuary of Apollo. So actually what lots of people also don't know is like the Athenians worshiped Athena, Spartans worshiped Athena and Apollo. I don't know necessarily why, to be honest, but they did. This is a hople or warrior, essentially. This is something that's a little bit larger and a bit different, and this is also something you see a lot in Athenian stuff, is lots of these craters and whatnot, these big um, ceramics that are actually grave markers. And later you kind of see these stone grave markers and whatnot, of lots of what the classical tradition. There is actually one, it's the grave relief from Garaki in Laconia. And so it's made of marble, and it's a little bit more recent than lots of that pottery that was like a century before. There's talk essentially that's probably depicting a, a perioikos, or a singular perioikoi essentially. He's not idealized, and he certainly doesn't look super militaristic and like super strong and prominent like the Spartans would want themselves to be depicted. And so he's probably just a craftsman. And I guess he 
identified with this unideal aspect more so than lots of the other people did. And I mean, the Athenians identified it with that as well. So I'm not exactly sure of all the social dynamics that were going on, but essentially I just wanted to show you a few works of uh, Spartan make. Hopefully you know that they, they, did, they did make art. Most cultures do, regardless if they're very militaristic or what have you. It just seems to be something very human. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'm not exactly an expert in this stuff, but one of my professors actually wrote his dissertation on Spartan ceramics. I could harass him if you need me to. This has been Shannon with Unique Arts, and thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.